of our telecast a bit later. Let me use the opportunity then to go <coughs> straight across to Tejas Mehta and given his uh, field of expertise, he's sticking his neck out only for Maharashtra. Mr. Mehta, thank you for at least making the attempt. I know it's a very confusing election. I have also lost thank track so of which spokesperson. In, in the spot, all of us here, you know. <laughs> Sir, I have lost track as an anchor which spokesperson belongs to which faction. I've been making those errors all morning. <clears throat> I can only tell after I've asked the first question that who who are they who are they bashing? Then I know that oh this is the other faction. So if I've <laughs> lost track, I, I sympathize for those of you who watch the elections, uh, uh, you know equally closely. So but stick your neck out, sir. Maharashtra, how do you predict it? Of course, these are not exit polls. We are just uh, taking you know hazarding guesses, you know educated guesses with whatever we have heard from the ground from our reporters from talking to politicians analysts and people on the ground of course now uh, i have of course gone from the figures we have from uh, the 2024 lok sabha elections because that was the first time we have seen uh, the mba and the mahayuti contest against each other uh, uh, the apple to apple comparison would have actually been uh, with the 2019 election but that was a completely uh, it would have been apple with oranges because the parties were completely uh, different the alliances were different they contested on different issues so i have taken uh, my base starting point as that added issues to all of this uh, that are prevalent on the ground and there are many many issues which are, which are which is what actually creating a sort of a hotspot or a khichdi and that is where there are so many influences actually in this election because this is not 2014 where you have a wave election this is not uh, 2019 in that sense where you know the prime minister could win on his charisma now times are different and therefore uh, local issues have to become far more prominent especially in a state like maharashtra where local issues have become far more prominent because we have not really had municipal election so even aapka sadak bura hai bijli nahi chal rahi hai it's all coming out now in assembly elections which should not really be the case because the assembly is for larger issues the municipality the panchayat really takes care of smaller things so let me get uh, straight away uh, to the figures which uh, i have uh, come to and i have not given a um, uh, a majority to any of the alliances and the primary reason for this is because of the rebel factor remember rebels are going to either play spoilers they will ensure that uh, you know that the parties which denied them tickets uh, their candidates do not win or they will they could even win themselves maharashtra at least has about 10 percent somewhere around 25 to 30 seats uh, being won by independence so rebels would come in that category they could win uh, you know by themselves around 8 to 10 seats so the number of uh, others uh, that uh, category has now increased in my estimate to 35 i have put uh, the mahayuti at uh, 128 and i have put the mva at 125 if you go back to our base, as I was saying, the Lok Sabha 2024 elections, uh, at that point of time, the MVA was ahead with 153 seats. In fact, they had won that much. And, uh, they, uh, and the leads would have been that much in the assembly segment. And the Mahayuti was 126. So it was behind by about 25, 26 uh, seats. The Mahayuti has made progress because of the largely Bahin scheme, which is I think going to be the biggest game changer, biggest influencer in this election. The the MBA loses out on that, in my opinion. And there are other factors. The MBA also loses out because of excessive rebel, uh, you know, antagonism and you know, cutting of votes, which is going to happen. And what the Mahayuti loses out on is, of course, the basic, you know, bread butter issues like uh, inflation, uh, especially of vegetables in Maharashtra skyrocketed. Um, Agrarian crisis, uh, we have seen in the Vidharb area uh, during the Lok Sabha election, the Mahayuti did not really do very well. In fact, the Congress was the one which really did well. So I think because of the policy changes, largely Bahen Bahen scheme and a slew of measures they have taken in the last uh, a few weeks, the Mahayuti has a slight edge. Okay. But 35 is, is others, so they will have to bring rebels and that is going to complicate the situation okay. even more. So for people who are not watching this from Maharashtra, 
the Mahayuti is the current incumbent, okay, uh, being ruled uh, currently led technically by the BJP, but the chief minister is from a different party, BJP the largest party. So now, let me put that into context of numbers. What you've just heard is the is the full. Let me give you the breakup. 81 says Tejas Mehta or thereabouts for the BJP. So about 24, 25 down from where they stood five years ago in their sheer numbers, but still the single largest party by a large measure. The Congress improving to 52 and becoming the second largest party in Maharashtra. This is in in line with the 13 seats they won in the Lok Sabha elections where they won the maximum number of seats for one party. The Shiv Sena as run by Eknath Shinde at around 41 seats and the Shiv Sena UBT at 45 seats. This would mean that the two Shiv Senas are potentially winning more seats than the BJP significantly improving upon their baseline performance as a, as a single party uh, five years ago where uh, the BJP remember had got 105. The NCP at 6, so his tabulation is, is roughly 81 plus 41, which is 122 plus 6, so around about the 128 mark, which is for the ruling party. That is well short of the halfway mark, which is 145. Okay? The Congress with 52, Uddhav Thakre with 45, takes you to 97. You add another 28 to that, and again you are in your 120s, around about the 124 mark. Again, well short of the halfway mark of 145. The key factor says Mr. Mehta is going to be the rebels, which now are in the other camp. Now, some of these rebels are from the Shiv Sena, some of them from the BJP, some of them for Congress. But in the rebellion category, you would have to now figure out who is potentially likely to come back into the fold if they do win. There are 8 to 10 people, he feels, who have exited recently because they have not gotten give, give, been given, given tickets by their parties or in the alliance arithmetic, their seats have gotten left out from the alliance. Therefore, they have missed out on the, on, on the ticket in the name of their party. 35. So, these rebels along with the others are going to hold the key for government. So, it is a hung house with an improved performance as far as 2019 is concerned for the Congress Uddhav Thakare Sharad Pawar Alliance, but not necessarily a dramatic improved, dramatically improved performance, roughly given what happened in the Lok Sabha. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mehta. We will come back you to you with, to analyze this very shortly. All right, let me now invite into this expert meter 